hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part 22 of what if kurama gave naruto a dojutsu remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and if you haven't yet and this is the first time you hear my voice what are you waiting for go ahead and click the red subscribe button and join the anime king family and be a part of the channel and also go ahead and check out Uchiha Naruto the Sage on my second channel. I post a new part, so go and enjoy. And on this channel, I just post what if Naruto went back in time. So go ahead and check out that as well. And thank you all for your support and help. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. You can So, to do a little bit of a recap, Naruto spent the entire month training Rukurama and his skills has improved a lot as he faced off against Neji in the final and showed him that there is no such thing as fate and one fate can be changed when Naruto defeated him. After that, Kiba and Shino went to battle and the winner was Kiba. The next battle was supposed to be Sasuke and Gara. But because of Sasuke not showing up, the Hokage decided to dismiss him and Sasuke was dismissed from the finals. So the next match was Gara vs Haku. So yeah, that was pretty much it but you guys can go ahead and check out the minor detail and enjoy. So let's start this new episode. So Haku hurt Gara. She's been training for the entire month. Her skills has improved. He's hurt. He's hurt really badly, Temari said to herself. Suddenly. White feather start to fall from the sky as most recognize this jutsu, knowing that it's again jutsu and dispel it. Kiba, hold still, said Naruto as he dispelled the jutsu cast on him and Kiba. As Naruto looked for Krama as she was sitting in the audience, Krama, he said with the mental link the both of them had, Do you feel anything? Yes, Naruto, she said, as she turned to a weird anfu. Get ready Naruto, I think something big is going to happen. Suddenly, a giant explosion came from the top of the tower. Everyone gasped as they turned to see their Hokage facing off against someone. It was not the Kazekage. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Kayube appeared next to him. Naruto, it's an invasion. That is Orochimaru in there, the Kayube told him. Naruto slightly cursed the timing as he saw Temari and Kankuro took Gara away. Naruto saw Sasuke along with Sakura go after them while most of the Jennings escort the civilian to safety. Naruto and Kiba then appeared next to Haku. Man, I never got to finish my fight, Haku said. Sorry Haku, but we're going to finish that later. Right now we need to find Gara and stop them. I don't know what they're planning, but it is a good start to stop this invasion. Naruto told them. Haku and Kiba nodded as they left the stadium and ran after the San Jennings. Naruto and his team run through the trees as they heard the sound of clashing metal. The village was really under attack and it was really bad. Man, this is bad. Let's hurry up and get this over with, Naruto told them. All three nodded and since they were a tracker team, they were able to find the footsteps fast and follow them. Haku turned her head and knew that they were being followed, but she smirked when she saw Shino and Shikamaru behind them. Man, this is such a drag. Why does this has to happen now, Shikamaru said to himself. As Shikamaru and Shino caught up with Naruto's team, as Shikamaru then stopped, you guys go ahead, he said. As everyone turned around to see about six Sun Shinobis, Shikamaru pulled out a kunai and said, go on. As they nodded and headed off. As Shikamaru looked towards the Sound Shinobis, Alright guys, how many moves does it take for you guys to get to the king? Meanwhile, the team was still running through the trees when they suddenly jumped out of the way as a burst of kunai rained down on them. 
as they saw Kong Crow and the puppet. You guys will not pass me, said Kong Crow. Only thing you have to do is surrender or die, he told them. Shino then stepped in front of them. You guys go on, I will handle this guy. Haku, Kiba and Naruto nodded with their thanks as they ran ahead to allow Shino to fight Kong Crow. When they arrived, they saw Sasuke on a tree branch and Sakura strapped to a tree by the sand. Naruto realized that Sasuke was unconscious as he saw a transformed Gara launch at Sasuke in an effort to end his life. Naruto sighed as he took out his lightning sword and pushed off towards Gara. Die! Gara yelled as he tried to hit Sasuke, but the hit never came. As Sasuke opened his eyes to see Naruto with his lightning sword blocking the punch, as Sasuke gritted his teeth as Naruto saw almost half of his face was covered with the curse mark. Well Sasuke, you never fail to disappoint me, Naruto said as he kicked Gara back into a tree. You can't stop me, I will kill you all, Gara said as he started to laugh out. Naruto then turned to Haku and Kiba who were waiting for Naruto orders to know what to do. Haku, try and get the Banshee over there out of the sand. Kiba, come fight with me and Sasuke but stay out of the way. As they nodded and did what they were instructed, as Sasuke seeded, as he think that he couldn't match up to Naruto in any way. Why is that damn dope so strong? I am a damn Uchiha. I am an elite. Why can't I surpass that damn bastard? Sasuke asked in anger as Haku then came up to Sakura. Haku inspected the sand for weak points while Temari watched Naruto and Kiba fight Mini Shikaku. Why are they fighting? They must be stupid, Temari said to herself. As Naruto took out Tasumi and Kiba took out Akamaru. Kiba, how many clones can you make? Naruto asked him. Kiba cracked his knuckle with a smile as they neared Gara. I can make about five without straining myself. Same with Akamaru. Why? Do you have a plan? Kiba asked him. Naruto nodded with a smile as he whispered the plan to Kiba. Gara narrowed his eyes as he swing five sand shurikens at them. You can't beat me with anything. Just give up and let me kill you, Gara yell. Naruto and Kiba jumped out of the way as they landed on a tree with their dogs. Ready, Kasumi? Naruto asked her. Kasumi nodded. As Naruto started the plan, Naruto charged at Gara with a grin on his face as Gara sent a sand shuriken towards Naruto. Alright, let's go. Shall I clone Jutsu? Naruto yelled as he summoned hundreds of clones. All of them jumped towards Gara and started attacking from all different angles. Gara managed to dispel about some of them, but it wasn't enough as five of them got underneath him. Naruto smirked as he just needed to cause Gara some form of damage. As the clones then kicked Gara into the air, Gara gasped as he saw Kiba, Kasumi, and Akamaru spinning violently as they crashed right into him. Get Suga! Inuzaka Fang! Kiba finished off as Gara was sent spiraling into the ground. Naruto and Kiba smirked as they landed back on the trees. Gara looked up from where he was as he narrowed his eyes. I am losing? To these weaklings? No, I will not die. I will not cease to exist. Gara yelled as sand shot out from underneath him, and a poof of smoke came out, covering a vast area. Everyone jumped back as the smoke started to clear away. Everyone widened their eyes as they saw the Shikaku full form. So that Shikaku, I didn't know. That he had such a homicidal looking demon inside of him, Naruto said as he turned to Kiba. Kiba, get back, I'll take care of this. Get to a safe distance, Naruto told him. Kiba didn't want to obey that order, but the serious in Naruto's eyes, it was like it was telling him to obey the order. Kiba slowly nodded as he backed up with Akamaru as Kasumi came up to Naruto. Naruto, what are you going to do? Kasumi asked him. Naruto picked up Kasumi and placed her in his jacket as Gara yelled. Alright Naruto Uzumaki, 
Try and fight me now! Gara yelled as he made a hand sign. Demonic possum jutsu! Gara said as he then fell asleep as Naruto gasped but he quickly ran through hand signs. Summoning jutsu he said as a large puff of smoke appeared and surrounded the area as Sasuke and Temari looked up as they couldn't say a word as they saw the giant nine-tailed demon in front of them while Haku and Kiba were wondering how this was possible. Naruto smirked as he stood on top of the Kayubi in her full nine-tailed form. The Kayubi looked up at him on her head and she smiled. Naruto then turned to Shikaku who was laughing like a maniac. I am back baby! Shikaku yelled as Kurama rolled her eyes as she looked at Shikaku in front of her as he gave her a sick chuckle. So Kayubi, you're working with your container. You should just kill that brat and take over him. Sorry Shikaku, but I respect my container. At least he treat me in the nicest way in a long time. Kurama told him as Shikaku narrowed his eyes as Naruto then turned to Kurama. So, how do we get him to leave? Naruto asked her. Kayubi narrowed her eyes as she saw the spot where Gara was as she pointed at him. Hit him there. Shikaku cannot be here if the host is awake. Wait that Gara kid up and Shikaku would be gone in an instant. The Kayubi told him. Naruto then nodded as the Kayubi lowered her back and then charged at Shikaku. Shikaku chuckled as he took a breath of air and then hit his stomach. Wind style, drilling ear bullet. Shikaku yelled as he sent three ear bullets at Naruto and the Kayubi. Fire style, Naruto said. Destructive flame as he blasts back a fireball hitting the ear bullets enhancing the fire as it slammed right into Shikaku as he whined about being burned. The Kayubi took this as a moment destruction as she rushed up to Shikaku and grabbed him and hold him down with her teeth and claws. Go Naruto the Kayubi told him as Naruto jumped off her head and ran straight towards Gara. Rise and shine, sleeping beauty, Naruto said as he slammed his fist into Gara's face. As Gara opened his eyes, as Shikaku groaned, No! I just got here! I don't want to go back! Shikaku's yell. But it was futile as he vanished and the sand then shattered. As Naruto and Gara fell to the ground, as Gara was unable to move, Naruto walked up to him slowly. No! Don't come near to me! I will not cease to exist. I am not going to die here, Gara said as he saw Naruto moving towards him. Naruto gave him a soft smile as Gara looked at him and wondered what was there to smile about. I know that pain, the pain of being alone and rejected, that feeling of loneliness. I usually think like you one time, that no one loved me or cared for me, Naruto said as he went close to Gara, But why? Why didn't you end up like me? Gara asked him. Naruto smirked as he stopped for a second before giving another smile. I have my friends, my family who helped me. I have the Kayubi, Kasumi, Hana, Kiba, Haku, my Jiji and Tasumi. Plenty of people for me to fight and protect what is important to me. Naruto told him as Gara shifted his gaze as he looked up at the bright blue sky. Friends, family, bonds, are these the things that make you so strong Naruto Uzumaki? Gara thought. Naruto smirked as he nodded. Soon Temari and Kankuro came out as they rushed towards Gara's aid. As Naruto wondered about Shino, both of them seemed ready to fight as they looked at Naruto, but they were stopped by Gara. That's enough. I am done, Gara said to them. As Temari and Kankuro looked at him, this was the first time that Gara stopped, that he actually looked tired. I can't believe it. He's had enough fighting. Temari thought as she turned and looked back at Naruto. As Haku and Kiba then came to Naruto's aid as they stand beside him. But Naruto didn't say anything as he just held up a hand as both Temari and Kankuro grabbed Gara 
and they left. So what Naruto? Should we chase after them? asked Kiba. Naruto chuckled. No, let them go, said Naruto. I think they've got a lot of making up to do, Naruto said. Oh man, I'm tired, Naruto said as he dropped down on the ground and passed out. The war ended as Konoha was the victor, as Saratobi survived. Orochimaru and all of his goons were driven out, out of Kanoha. So, they were very lucky. One and a half week later, thanks to the effort of the shinobi, the village was repaired and people were starting to go out on missions again. Saratobi was able to go back to the Hokage mansion as he called the tuning exam participant and their senses to the room. Naruto has spent the week relaxing with Haku and Kiba as they all felt like they need the week off. So now they were going to the Hokage mansion as Naruto managed to catch up with Haku and Kiba on their way. Well, did you guys enjoy the week? Naruto asked them as the both of them nodded. They really did. A couple minutes later, they arrived in the office to see Shino, Shikamaru, Neji, Sasuke, Along with them, Asuma, Kurunai, Kakashi, and Genma. Naruto gave a wave to Kurunai, who formed a small smile and waved back, which Asuma raised an eyebrow. After 10 minutes, Saratobi came in the room as he sat in a chair. He then glanced at everyone and smiled. Sorry about that, the council meeting took longer than I hoped, Saratobi said to them. First of all, I want to say congratulations on making it to the tuning finals. And second, thank you all for helping in the village in time of crisis. Saratobi then pulled out a tuning vest and smiled. For great intelligence and use of tactics, I promote from Jenny to tuning. Shikamaru Nara, Saratobi said as Shikamaru stepped forward and rubbed the back of his head. Man, this is so troublesome. It mean more work for me, which made everyone sweat drop, but he got a laugh from Naruto and Asuma. Saratobi then handed him a vest as he took out another. For a spectacular show and use of power and techniques, I promote from Jenin to Chunin, Kiba Inuzaka, as he gave the Chunin vest to Kiba. Kiba gasped as he bowed to Saratobi and said thank you. Naruto patted Kiba on the back while Haku gave him a warm smile for a good show and astounding the audience I promote from Jenin to Chunin, Haku, Mamakai, Sarutobi said as Haku smiled with a nod as he handed her the vest. Naruto smiled as he gave Haku a hug. As Naruto was sad he didn't get a vest but Sarutobi then chuckled as he looked at Naruto as he took out a vest. It was dark green, as the others were light. For astounding everyone, even me, with your power, speed, and overall use of jutsu that you technically shouldn't have, I promote from Jenin to Jonin as everyone jaw drop. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto went from Jenin straight up to Jonin as Shikamaru just look. What kind of luck does this troublesome blonde have? As all of the sensei smile, even Shino had a small smile under his coat, but no one knew that. Naruto took the Jonin vest as he grabbed it as a few tears came out of his eyes. As Saratobi then went towards the window, I am happy for all of you, but it has just gotten harder for everyone as you have more responsibility to uphold. The path of a shinobi isn't. Hokage said Asuma. What is it Asuma? Said Saratobi as he turned around. Naruto is gone, Asuma said. Saratobi chuckled as he knew where Naruto was going. As so did Kiba and Haku. Hiruzen sighed as he took a puff of his smoke. Well, I'll save the speech for later. Enjoy the rest of your days off. With Naruto, Naruto ran across the rooftops as he had a big smile on his face as he looked down at his vest. Kasumi then popped out her head out of his jacket. Well Naruto, you must really be happy. What is the occasion? 
Kasumi teased as she already knew what was going on. Naruto smirked. Don't tease me, Kasumi. I am already happy as it is, Naruto told her. Kasumi chuckled but nodded as they came up to the Inuzaka compound. Naruto came in as he saw Hana reading and Tasumi on the couch. Naruto smiled as he came in the room. Hello Tasumi. Hello Hana, Naruto told them. Tasumi smirked and Hana put her boat down as they turned to Naruto. Tasumi got up and walked to Naruto as she saw the smile on his face. I take it that you made Chunin, Tasumi asked him. Naruto held up his head and shook it, saying no, which caused her to raise her eyebrow. Her smile faded slightly but didn't vanish as Naruto kept up the mysterious smile. Then why are you so happy? Tasumi asked him as Hana was curious as well. As Naruto then held up the dark green vest. I made Jonin, Naruto said. Tasumi gasped along with Hana as their smile was back and in full bloom. Hana kissed Naruto on the cheek and smiled. Nice job Naruto, Hana told him. Naruto nodded with a smile as he turned to Tasumi. Hana glanced at her mother and simply backed away as she gave the two a moment alone. Do I meet your conditions? Naruto asked her. Tasumi walked up as she kneeled down and gave him a kiss on the lips as Naruto dropped his Joni vest. Naruto smiled as he heard the Kayubi inside jumping up and down in her cage. She didn't have to be there but she wanted to. Naruto wrapped his arms around her as they went deeper into the kiss. After a while, both of them parted. Naruto turned to her flushed face as he smiled. Tasumi, will you go out with me? Naruto asked her. She smiled as she thought over Naruto's request. She smirked as she turned back to Naruto. Of course, Naruto, I am more than happy to go out with you. Tasumi told him as she then grabbed his hand as she was leading him somewhere. Tasumi, where are we going? Naruto asked. Tasumi then smiled as she led Naruto upstairs. Now that you're an adult, you're going to fulfill an obligation that you have to me. Tasumi told him as Naruto blushed as he heard Kurama fake cry. My Naruto is an adult now. Do your best Naruto, Kurama told him. As Naruto blushed deepened, as she led Naruto to the room and closed the door. Naruto saw the bed that was made for two people as he turned back to her. Are you sure, Tasumi? I don't want you to think that you have to rush into this, Naruto told her. She smirked as she walked up to Naruto and gave him a hug. Thank you, Naruto. But as the alpha female, I need this and I know you want to. So, do you want to? Tasumi asked him. Naruto's smile got larger. Hell yeah, he shouted. After a while, Naruto lay on the bed as he gently brushed his hand through Tasumi's ear as she was sleeping peacefully. I love you Tasumi, Naruto said as he then fell asleep. The next morning, Naruto opened his eyes to the rays of sunshine as he turned to see that it was morning as he saw Tasumi sleeping next to him as he remembered everything that happened last night and a look came on his face, a rather perverted look and he then chuckled as he also remembered that he was a Joni now. After a while, Tasumi wake up. Good morning, Naruto. I am surprised that you got up before me. She said making Naruto chuckle as Naruto breathed his hand through her hair and got in closer. It wasn't easy. You really know how to celebrate, Naruto whispered to her, making her blush. But she nodded and leaned forward and gave him a small kiss. They then break it as the both of them got up and got dressed. So what now? Am I the head of the Inuzaka clan? Naruto asked as a small joke. She chuckled and put on her shinobi sandals before walking to the door. Naruto followed her lead as both entered out the door where Kiba, Akamaru, Hana and Kasumi were. As Kasumi saw Naruto and rushed towards him and jumped on him, as she then started to lick his face. Naruto, you smell like Tasumi, not to mention you are quite loud, said Kasumi with a smile. As Naruto then started to blush, 
Sorry about that, I will try to be quieter, Naruto said as Kasumi rolled her eyes. Yeah right, she said as she leapt back down to the floor. Naruto then turned to see Hana and Kiba with a big grin on their face. As Naruto sit between the both of them, as they were silent, as Hana was drinking her tea and Kiba was petting Akamaru, Naruto then grabbed both of their shoulders. Don't ignore me you two. As Tasumi then brought Naruto a cup of water, as Naruto drank it, as Kiba said, sorry dad, I didn't mean to ignore you, making Naruto choke on the water. Hana chuckled hard as Naruto coughed. As Naruto glared at Kiba, Kiba, don't call me dad, Naruto said to him. As the Kayubi who woke him up had to laugh also, Hana then placed her hand on Naruto's shoulder and gave him a confused look. Why shouldn't he call you dad? You are our dad. And that is the way it is, said Hana. Naruto sighed as he stood up before cracking his knuckles. Kiba and Hana start to sweat as they back away as Naruto reached for a kunai. Stop calling me dad, he said as he chased them around the compound and swinging the kunai like a madman. Hana and Kiba laugh as they avoid Naruto. Tasumi then placed breakfast on the table as Kiba told her, Mom, please tell dad that it is dangerous for him to be waving around a sharp object around the kids. Naruto was angry as he then summoned 13 shadow clones as this made Hana and Kiba sweat slightly as the both of them got cornered in the yard but they were still grinning and laughing. Now stop calling me dad, Naruto said as the both of them sweat drop as they stopped their games. Tasumi then called everyone for breakfast as they all returned to their seats. Well, let's all talk now, Tasumi said to everyone as all of them stopped eating. As she then turned and looked to Naruto. Naruto, I hope you realize that dating a clan head is quite serious, Tasumi told him. Naruto narrowed his eyes, but he nodded as she then continued with the conversation. Since the CRA was enacted on you, you will have to choose the woman you want to be with. I am not going to have any weak females in this life, so you have to discuss things with me before you act. Just because you're the alpha male, it doesn't mean that you can do anything you want in the Inuzaka compound. Tasumi told him. Hana and Kiba turned their gaze to Naruto, who narrowed his eyes and looked at the table before answering. So this is a discussion about the woman that I should have, Naruto asked. She nodded. I was planning on telling you about them anyway. I mean it. You would see them around since you're the alpha female and all. Well, said Naruto as he bit his thumb and slammed his hand on the floor as smoke engulfed the kitchen. After the smoke cleared, the Kayubi stood there in a black kimono, her red hair flowing. A little warning next time would be nice, Naruto, the Kayubi said with a small pout. Naruto grinned as he rubbed the back of his head. Sorry about that. So it's time to introduce you. But guys, I'm gonna be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification so they post it. Remember to share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And yeah, if you haven't yet, go and check out what if Naruto went back in time. And trust me, you're going to enjoy. And go check out my second channel. I posted a new episode of Uchiha Naruto the Sage. So yeah, for now, I'm out. Peace.